Oh, you hear the train? You hear the train coming? Yes, the train is on its way to you. God has got a promise for you. You've been on this road a long time and you're looking at it and saying, man, there's no train coming for me. My possibilities, what's gonna happen with my possibilities? Oh, but the train is coming. See, you may not see it, but you hear it. And we got the track ready, so keep your track ready because the train is coming. This train is about to leave the station, headed around the world, spreading the good gospel and inspirational music. Your conductor, Elder James Lockhart, bringing the world the very best in inspirational and gospel music. Yeah. 
right, while we're playing the piano, we're gonna kick it on over to Legacy! Yeah, yeah. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Having a blessed morning. Welcome to Rima Gospel Express on KROBFM.com. And we have a very, very special guest today. She said not call her doctor. But since I'm a Southern boy, I say Miss Renee Watson. How you doing? Good. Good morning. The Lord is blessing and let me see another day and travel safe on God's highway to get here. So we are very excited about being able to join you this morning. Yes, ma'am. And also we have the conductor, the smooth, fly conductor himself, James Elder Larkar. Choo-choo. Y'all know how we do. He been fly this whole month. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Uh, I think he getting ready for the Black Panther premiere. That's why know. he dressed up. <laughs> He must yeah. gonna be on stage. You know, he must gonna be on stage. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, he clean like a Renaissance man. Getting red day. <laughs> so today is one of the uh, this topic right here. I'm, I'm enjoying the opportunity that you are able to provide and being that a strong, um, strong woman in the position that you're in. You know, especially just the the, the knowledge and the, the knowledge and just dealing with different people every day for those who not familiar with you i know a lot of my people because i got a lot of military friends yeah. everywhere so just tell us a little bit about yourself well my name is renee watson um i'm a native san antonio born and raised uh, as my pastor used to call me before he uh he passed reverend e thurman walker um my nickname is madam esther mm -hmm. because if you know the story of esther you know where she was and how she dealt with her own community without others knowing that she, that yeah. she was taking care of them. Yeah, exactly. So we get to see a lot of people coming in through, and we're part of the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about Bear County, uh, you don't really think about doing business. You think about all the other things in life. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you spend part of your life with the county. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we talk to those individuals when they come back into the community. Uh, so we have the uh, Small Minority Women Business Veterans Disabled um, Business Enterprise Program. Yes, ma'am. I've been at the county for 17 and a half years. Mm. And we kind of do, if you're thinking about it, all the way into if you're a multi-millionaire, we'll sit down with you and help you grow your business. Okay, so pretty much you pretty much uh, help people with business plans. Er, well, kind yeah, of er, kinda think, kinda thinking about it. Okay. And then we'll link you to someone who can help you write it down. Uh -huh. Help you get it to the bank. Help you to find the financing. Oh, wow. To help you to figure out how, if you have outstanding tax issues. Yeah. Because sometimes we don't take care of our books Ooh. and it gets us in trouble. Ah. Which keeps us from being able to grow. Ah. I know. We see a lot of celebrities suffer from that. I ain't gonna name drop. <laughs> <laughs> but you see them. When the money's good, you're living off of it. But mm -hmm. there's no plan for it. So if you get hurt or if something happens to you, then what happens? Mm. There's no legacy and wealth generations in uh, the business. It used to be in our communities as mm. we were growing up. I don't mm. know if you can remember if your grandfather, if somebody you knew had a business, you automatically knew somebody in that family was going to take so over that business. Automatically. Automatically. Automatic. Yep. Automatic. And, and even when you see in the entertainment I industry, it's a good thing to see the kids that are coming through and taking over and working with their parents. Yeah. But technology has changed so much, are the artists really being able to leave anything? Yeah. Because if they're not getting paid to tour, are they really making money off of their recordings? Yeah. Because the industry has changed so much. Yeah, definitely. And we have met with several um, artists who uh, used to be uh, very popular in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. Because where our office is located, we're right next door to the DBA office. Because what's the first thing you do? You got to get the name of your business. Yeah, exactly. First thing. First thing. First, I was on top. I did mine in El Paso. I got mine in El Paso. All those are out, out of Georgia. And uh, just the research behind business just alone, it just, uh, it can be tedious. Yeah, and, and it, costly. It, yeah, but the, thing, it's, but the thing about it, I'd rather be tedious than expensive. Because a lot of that I see, you, you pay the price of convenience of somebody else doing it for and you. And it's sometimes wrong. And it's... <laughs> We see a lot of people that come through there spend five, six hundred thousand dollars, sometimes a hundred dollars, and it's it's free information right there on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll help you to get that. So, um, to the degree, uh, do y'all also help with grants and stuff for the um, like pair grants for people that are doing startup businesses as well? Well, you know that's a big misconception in the community. That there's a grant or any way you can get free money to start your business. Okay. The only free Speak money on you're gonna it. get on is the free money from your parents. Uh. <laughs> because that's the only ones that, uh. or somebody you know that's not going to expect you to pay it back. Yeah. But if you are a for-profit business uh -huh. and you want to make money off of that business, we need to figure out how you can raise capital mm. because sometimes capital is a barrier to doing business, especially oh, wow. as a small business. Um, you need to check your credit right now. 
mm. find out what's going on because your personal credit, your personal history, is sometimes usually the, the basis in the rock if you have no other kind of collateral. And there are several organizations out there that help you, the Lift Fund, UTSA, Small Business Development Center. They'll help you to put that together and kind of look at that bid package. Okay. For those who don't know what capital is and don't understand how credit affects you personally with business, can you break down the words capital, collateral, and how your credit affects you for those who are learning, who may be overheads with stuff of that nature. So first thing first is when you talk about capital, capital being a barrier, what do you mean by that? So let's talk. Let's start with your cap, your your own personal finances. What we mean by credit. Okay. So everybody got credit. Everybody knows what that is. Mm -hmm. That means if you go and you get a payday loan, you get a title loan on your car, mm -hmm. it get repoed then on you got a negative on your credit report. Yes. You don't want to do that. You don't want to be shopping and take going to the pawn shop and every time getting money, unless you're trying to finance something, you don't pay it back and then it becomes a negative on your credit report. Mm -hmm. Then you get credit cards. Say you go to college, you get all these credit cards and then you kind of forget about them. You mm -hmm. don't pay them. That becomes a negative on your credit report. Mm -hmm. Very basic, simple. You overdraft on your debit card. Mm -hmm. That's a negative on your credit report. Mm -hmm. If you have not, as anybody who has a social security number, to pull their free credit report once a year. You can mm -hmm. get a free annual and can see where you are today. Mm -hmm. Especially with so much identity theft. Mm -hmm. Then you go in and you say, what is collateral? Okay. Do you own anything besides your car? Mm -hmm. Because if you have a house, you have a mortgage. Yep. And you have a certain amount of revenue or wealth built into that. Yes, That's why when you saw the housing crisis, you saw very few uh, minority and small businesses, they couldn't continue to grow mm -hmm. because that's usually where we get our money from, mm -hmm. is in our property and our mortgages. Definitely. And it was a big thing across the country. Then, so what else, what other kind of collateral do you have? What can you put up that's some, as of a value to the bank that if you default, they would take that and, and you would be okay. They would get their money back. Mm -hmm. So then, what is capital? Capital is money. How Definitely. do you finance the business? Definitely. So depending on what you're doing, I've had people come in and want to do a beauty barber salon. Uh -huh. They need $500 to get three more chairs, and they don't have the cash at that time. Mm -hmm. Lift Fund, which is called a micro lender, could probably look at that because maybe they have a building, maybe they have some other kind of monies. Mm -hmm. They don't want them to burn through their cash. Definitely. Because you got to meet payroll. Definitely. So it's a very complicated process and we invite anybody is depending on the level that you're starting because we want everybody to start and establish a real business. Definitely. Then we set a mentor protege program depending on if you can get and you can learn from someone who's already doing it. Oh wow. And then the city has one. We have several in the construction industry but they're very far and few between because it really helps um, the individual to come in and sit down and talk with us and we're kind of trying to figure out where you're trying to go. Okay, definitely. So those are very, very, very clear breakdown. Now, my next question, I'm going to let you do all most of the talk because I just want, I'm soaking everything <laughs> up. So trust me, I'm it's prepared. Right. I'm it's prepared. Right. I just got questions. It's I like to right. ask questions. Now, just say I'm fresh, I'm, I'm out, I'm, I've been incarcerated, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, I need to change. You know how hard it is when you have that on your, I know they say, no, we're not biased, they lying. You know what I'm saying? They, some people don't believe in second chance or they do, you know, they, they'll hire until they find it out, then they let you go with like we overstaffed or some of the nature. But that's common. I'm not gonna sit here and act like it's not common. You know what I'm saying? But what I do wanna talk about as a, a convict, you know, how do you help or how do that establishment help those people that wanna start their business, fresh starts, stuff of that nature? They don't have no collateral, they don't have, you know, this, that, that, or whatever. Is it possible for those people to get help? Or just anybody in general to get help as well, but especially those people that have been in the system at the county? Well, let's talk about two parts of that question. Uh, when Tommy Calvert, Commissioner Calvert got elected, the first thing he did is he really looked at that issue. And we've had two job fairs for Second Chance. Uh -huh. where we actually go to the community and say, employers, uh, under his leadership, do you hire formerly incarcerated individuals? Both of those jobs fairs have had over 100 employers stand up to the plate and say, yes, we hire. So wow. we've had the first time uh, he, he held that, he hosted that at the at and Center. We had over 1,800 formerly incarcerated men and women come wow. and, and make connections that's, to get hired. Big. Some of them got hired on the spot. That's big. Two years later, we had it again, which was last year, and he and under his leadership, he brought in a little, a little over 100. We also brought in the tattoo removal people 
because a lot of employers don't want to see the tattoos invisibly, uh, and that's a barrier to getting to oh, get yeah. hired. Yeah. So that we did that for free. Oh, now wow. he's working on, and he has established, and he leads the reentry council at Bear County. Uh, right on the other side, just south of uh, the Bear County Jail, is the Bear County Reentry Center. Yes, so if you need employment, you need services, you need bus, bus passes, your family needs help, you can go to that center as a formerly incarcerated individual and get all kind of helps. They have a list, they have computers where you can sign up and find a job. Because sometimes you see on the list that we hire, mm -hmm. uh, but when you get there, they say, no, we don't hire formerly incarcerated. But if you're working through the reentry center, there are certain people because it's all—it's like everything else. You got to know who you're talking to at those those right employers yeah, to be able definitely. to connect. So then I teach a class inside the Bear County Jail at the detention center to uh, incarcerated individuals because we want to get to them before they get out. Yeah, definitely. And we tell them the same story. This is one path. And if you, you're not on this path, then let's talk about entrepreneurship. Definitely. So we do eight weeks, two hours, a different elements of the business plan. Okay. And I've done that at the Bird County Jail four times uh, over the last five years because we kind of give them a little space. And I've actually had at least three to come out and start their business. Wow. File their DBA, come see me, and they're actively putting up their family to work mm -hmm. and other people that they know were formerly incarcerated. Definitely. The other program I participate is this. We've had two uh, that I, I know of personally that were, that were in a class that got transferred to TDCJ, the mm -hmm. state penitentiary, mm -hmm. between five and ten year sentences. My Lord. The state has a program called the Texas Prison Entrepreneurship Program. Mm -hmm. And it takes 150 inmates from all of the different jails into this program in Conroe, Texas. And I've been there, and they have like a shark tank. It's funded by Chase Bank and Baylor University. They provide this training. Mm -hmm. So when those gentlemen get out, and it's been about 1,200 to go through that program, and almost 800 have started their own business throughout my the state God, of Texas. My God. So, and they know, and they come and tell you their life stories because they made a mistake when they were young. Yeah. And they come from our communities. They come from all communities across the, st the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. When they're released back to the communities, we know due to the nature of their crime, they will not get a job. Definitely. So we have to give them employment, ways to take care of their families. And through that program, it really gives us an idea. And I've seen some, several of them come back to this community uh, and start those types of programs and, and do their own business. So we're here to be able to, to and we do a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. We see people every day. And everything is confidential. So if you want to come down and we, we sit down and talk with you and we'll give you the materials to help you out. Definitely, definitely. And we're going to take a, a, a brief intermission. We got more questions and more knowledge. And then we'll um, also do, uh, I'll call it, well, uh, we'll go back and rebrief so we can give you more information on those different things. So y'all stay tuned to Remo Gospel Express here on KROVFM.com. I'm Legacy City with Miss Renee Watson and the uh, conductor himself. Choo-choo. Elder James Lockhart, sister. We'll be right back. You're listening to Hey, -E what's happening? Y'all getting all the information? See, the good thing about Facebook Live, you just rewind it back. And you get all the information. Miss, yeah. miss, um. Send us some questions. No, send it. You got questions. Okay, hold on. I'm about to come back on. Send us some questions. They can call in. Call in and send us a message. Oh, I need to pop. 210-785-9227. Visit KROVFM.com for more details. Hey, what's happening? Hi, I'm Legacy City, and welcome back to Rima Gospel Express here on KROVFM.com with myself, the conductor himself, Choo Choo, Elder James Lockhart, and we had a beautiful, smart, intelligent woman of power, Miss Renee Watson. Good morning. Good morning. So we were just talk about just business plan for the um those who've been incarcerated and the numbers you gave are they just that's beautiful numbers that you gave the results because um, society won't acknowledge it. You know, like I they won't they won't, they're not bold enough to say when they get out I'm not hiring. Right. You know what I'm saying? They want to they want to hide behind the you know. What, the, 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 let's let's, let's you know talk. I mean? a, let's talk a little bit about that because let's get it. Let's sometimes <clears throat> there's a there's misinformation on employers because there's a risk that's associated. Of course. And sometimes that they may not want to say out front, but behind the scenes they do hire. Yeah, definitely. But it's about talking to the right individuals when you get there, mm -hmm. and that's the hardest part. And that's why it's so critical what Commissioner Calvert is doing is to making those people come out and say yes, I hire. 
and contact his office, going through the reentry center, because you just can't walk up on somebody's property and, and, and go to HR and say, when you walk in the door, hey, I'm probably incarcerated, hire me. Oh, of course, and of course. It, Well, but it happens. When you walk in and there's a misnomer, because racism is alive and well. Uh-oh. And you have to make sure that what you're doing, <laughs> that God put on your heart to be able to say, I am doing this for the right reason. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of good people out there, especially in San Antonio, that says, mm -hmm. I am willing to help those and give them a second chance. Mm -hmm. And how do we make those links to, 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 to help everybody find each other? Uh, we highly suggest you go to the Bear County Reentry Center. And they have a website, they have videos, they have all kind of information, and they link with you to a lot of services where uh, everybody can get help on both sides. Can we get that address? I mean, just for even for here and there, so people we absolutely well. we definitely want to. Um, so, with all this information, you have to apply it. There's no reason um, why it's, it's out there. Like you said, misinformed, and people say um, people perish from the lack of knowledge. But That's I heard right. somebody say, not only do they perish from a lack of, a lack of knowledge, but they perish because they don't know how to apply the knowledge. Correct. You know, so just simply going down and sit down. And as a culture, you know, we're right, like, we're in so many ways we're taught, you know, is is it's weak to ask for help. That's right. And that's a stigma on and they've been implanted in our culture for so long that we're we're sorry I'm sorry to say it, but no I'm not. I'm being politically correct. I'm not sorry to say it. It put us behind the power curve. That's right. Because we can't ask for help. Or we can't come to each other and ask for help, but we'll go outside of us and go help somebody. You know, and in the same breath with us, we can't go to each other for help and then we crap on each other. You know what I'm saying? That's why I tell people, like, treat me like I was, you know what I'm saying, the other man. You won't do that to him. You won't withhold this information from him. So it's very important that we stop being prideful. I mean, it ain't even sometimes it ain't pride. It's just how we was taught. Right. You so know? so that that uh, legacy of information, or that yes. transfer of information, that's why I was so excited when every time I get a call to come and share here at KROV FM Radio, because it gives them an opportunity. Because there's a, there may be a listener that we don't we don't talk to. Yeah, there may be a listener or someone on your site that needs the information. Yeah, definitely. There may be a grandmother that's sitting there that has a grandson that yeah. needs the information. And I get a lot of those calls. Mm -hmm. My phone number is 210-335-2478. 210-335-2478 because my background I have been a constituent services director for State Senator Rodney Ellis out of Houston mm -hmm. um, I've served as a chief of staff for a city council member in San Diego California mm. so Whew. learning and understanding how services works is an opportunity for us to do good in this community mm -hmm. I'm born and raised in San Antonio on the east side I went to Gates Elementary Riley Middle School before it became MLK Academy. yeah she rapping y'all y'all see Sam it Sam Houston High School yes uh, undergraduate at UT TSA. So the opportunities to be a part of this community and make a difference is something that uh, makes my heart good every day. Yes, ma'am. So I get excited when I go to work every day and be able to see somebody because being a part of the county, <clears throat> you, you see the person coming in with a smiling face getting married. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things don't work out. You see, might see the same couple a couple of years later going to divorce. Then something is there's the child support court that they're, they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Or if they have a business. They're coming in to pay that property tax. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the county, it's more than just a criminal justice system and incarceration. And how do we make those opportunities available to our community is something that we take pride in being able to do each and every day mm -hmm. uh, through what uh, the over 4,000 employees that make up county government. Wow, wow. So I'm getting the um, that address for you, but uh, folks can call and ask me at, at the same time. Can you get that number out one more time, please? 210-335-2478. And our website is <clears throat> www.bearbexar.org uh, forward slash SMWBE. But if you get on the county's website, there's a link for reentry, the reentry council. Mm -hmm. Same with veteran services. We do a lot with veterans, and especially okay. military services. Yeah, those, those are my next question. Yeah. 
Yeah. 